So hey guys, our clothes dryer at the house is out of operation, giving problems, and uh, I knew I needed to take a look at it, but the funny thing is, my wife is not gonna let me forget this. As I'm coming home today, as I'm walking through this door, I had a note waiting for me. As I got in further into the house, I had yet another note waiting for me. And then as I come around the corner where our dryer is, I had yet two more notes waiting for me. So I think I need to get looking at this thing. So anyway, guys, you know me, let's get busy. All right, guys, let me show you the symptoms of what's going on and let you see what the problem is. So the problem we have is when you turn power on, you go to hit start and it just does that. And you get this air light up here that says sensing. So we will need to go around behind and we will need to troubleshoot and check and see what the problem is. So hey guys, not trying to scare you uh, with talking about the voltage, but just so you know, anytime you're working on a dryer, any kind of electronic appliance, make sure if you're gonna work on it, you unplug it. If you're not comfortable doing this and don't know what you're doing as far as some basic checks, don't even mess with it, just hire a professional. But in the case of a dryer especially, uh, dryers run on 220 and that's some serious voltage and that can hurt you fast. So not to scare you, but just make sure you don't forget to unplug before you get down here working on anything. Okay guys, the way this works is this is the air intake that where the air is pulled into your dryer. It goes up and pulls into the can. This side over here is the exhaust. It runs down and then you hook your uh, hose here to get the uh, discharge air out outside. So one of the problems that you run into is this is called a thermal switch and it's like a fuse for heat is the best way. Instead of having too much current going through it like a car fuse, this gets too hot and it blows just like a car fuse. Anyway, this is located right here and this is in the discharge area and I've got it upside down. It goes in and sets in like this. And if this, if your air is getting too hot coming out, you will pop this. So uh, the way you'll know this is out, obviously our sensor is on, it will not turn. The power will come on, but it will not turn on. So you can own this out. Now it's easy to check. We will uh, pull these two wire leads off with everything unplugged and we can own this out. And let me, come up here and I will show you what a bad one looks like. Okay guys, this is just a standard multimeter and I've got it on ohms. You can see here, and this is just for measured in continuity. And if you short it out, see how it goes to zero. When I make the connection here, I'm just shorting it out. See, now it goes back to overload. All right, so this is the thermo switch that's bad. And when you check it, you just put your meter on each contact and you can see that it stays on OL, so this is an open circuit. This is an easy fix. Now, in my particular case, I repaired this and it started working again, but it wasn't too long and it blew this a second time. So they tell you in what you know is going on is you've got something else that's causing, this just wasn't a component failure, this was something causing this to get too hot and blowing, there's something going on. So the first thing it tells you to check for it is to look and make sure you don't have any restrictions in your um, uh, exhaust path, meaning this area through here, your hose is either kinked, it's full of lint, or uh, there's something restricting the airflow and everything in here is getting too hot. In my case, that, that was not the case. Uh, all of this was clean, it was all, all doing fine. So for me, my problem was the thermostat control which is mounted over on the intake and what this right here senses the heat that's inside this container your elements your that get real hot uh they're inside here and what what is going on with my problem is is this is not sensing properly it is never telling this that you're up to temperature so you can back off so this was coming on wide open, staying on wide open, and it was making everything get hot. This was always turned on high max. So anyway, uh, for me to fix my problem, I am going to replace this, and then I'm gonna put a new thermal switch in, and then we should be in great shape. So let me walk you through doing that. Now, 
This one is kind of an oddball shape. It's a little bit different design. So when you decide that this is bad, you just, uh, for me, we're lucky we have a, a very well-stocked appliance store here in town and just go by and get the number. You can actually, if you want to, if you don't mind waiting, you can go <clears throat> get, uh, go on uh, Google and just do a search, pull up, type in this part number and uh, it'll come up and you can order it if you want to wait. For me, we had one in town here with the appliance center. Uh, the prices were compatible, so I just went ahead and bought it local. So anyway, let me go ahead and show you how this one slips on. This one's a little bit different. This one, let me see if I can get you guys down a little bit closer here. So this right here is where this goes. This goes underneath the lip, like so. And then this just pushes down on that other stud connector. All right, once you get that on, then it's just a matter of sliding your couplers back on. This just pops in like that. And this just slides in like that. And it clicks and locks in. All right, and so that is all it is to put the regulator on. So now we will go over and we will replace the thermal switch. All right, now that I got this installed, I want to replace the thermo switch, which is this right here. And it's very easy to install and it has a little lip on the back side and this goes down into here and it just slides right into place like that you put your one screw on and this takes a quarter size socket Just run it up like so, and then all right, and that's all it is to it slipping the lugs back on. So, for right now, I'm gonna slide it back in place and we'll power it back up and we'll see if we are all working. If we are, then we'll button it all up. Well, okay guys, we're back in business and the dryer's back working. Uh, it ended up taking two parts and those parts were less than $75 total. And counting, not counting uh, running to town to get the parts, the entire repair was about an hour's worth of work and was not bad to do. Again, re-emphasizing, make sure you unplug if you're gonna do work inside this thing. So guys, have a great afternoon. Thanks so much for watching. Remember here, Project Next One, there's always one more. guys. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.